What's up guys, it's Instinct here, and today I'll be showing you guys how to make some mossy, viney, grungy type of material in Cinema 4D. So this tutorial will work with any version of Cinema 4D, and I'll be showing you guys how to make textures as well for this specific material completely from scratch. So what you guys want to do is you guys want to go to File, and you guys want to go to New. And just go ahead and make sure that you have your document set up to 4000 width and 4000 height, and then change it to 8000 width and 8000 height, because we're going to be using both of them. So I've already done this, so I'm just going to close this out. Now make sure you're in the 8000 by 8000 one. You can do this by going to image, image size, change this to pixels, and you'll see that it says 8000 by 8000. Just make sure you're in your 8000 by 8000 one. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer and make sure this layer is transparent, which it should be. Actually, we can actually delete this layer like that just to make it a little bit less confusing and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to filter and we're gonna go to render right here and click tree now once this loads up what we're gonna do is you guys can mess around with the settings if you would like but I literally just left it on the default so that's what I'm gonna be doing and literally just click OK now once it renders out the tree you will get a PNG of the tree that is transparent and what you can do is just go ahead and drag it into the 4000 by 4000 document. The only reason we did this is that we can get the texture a little bit bigger. Because uh, ideally you want a uh, texture at least 4000 by 4000. I'm going to go ahead and delete the background layer since we don't really need it. And from here what we can do is just kind of hide this in the corner like so. Hit Control J and then just kind of do this. And just kind of rotate it around and get some different types of looks that you guys would like. So once more, Control J, just kind of move this and cover the entire uh, surface with um, some trees. So I think something like that is good. And yeah, so if you guys have some, I don't have any, but if you guys have some lighter parts on darker parts, you guys can always mask this out. Just click this button right here and get a black brush and start erasing parts. If you guys want to like, um, if you guys have some lighter parts and you guys want to take some chunks out to blend it in a little bit more, you guys can do that. But for my example, this is actually looking really blended in well. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and add some color correction. So to do that, go ahead and click curves. And I'm just going to bring up the highlights a little bit more like that. And go ahead and bring the darks down as well. When it comes to mossy or grass materials, I always like having them really dark. I just think that's the best way to do them. And so that's why I'm dragging this down a little bit and I'm going to do that one step further by adding a levels and also just dragging the darks up just a little bit like that and I think that's looking dark enough. Yeah, so basically this is all I do for my textures. Actually, one last thing we can do is merge all these layers and then make sure it's in one layer, hit Control J and go to filter and go to Ren or other, go to high pass. And put this at 5 pixels and click OK. And then ch change this blending mode to overlay. What this does is it just sharpens up everything just to make this texture pop a little bit more. And that is basically all I do for my textures. From here, go, go to File and go to Export, Save for Web Legacy. And just go ahead and make sure it's a PNG and just go ahead and click Save. Alright, so once we save our texture, we can go ahead and jump right into Cinema 4D. And I'm going to delete this material and start all over again. So to start off, I always like having a text and a landscape with spherical and scaleless down. These are always what I use to test my materials out because these are like the two main things that you guys are probably going to be using your materials on. So I guess we can start with the landscape material because I typically differentiate the materials between text and landscapes. I usually have two different materials specifically for each one. So go ahead down here, double click, make a new material. Go ahead, double click on the material again, and you will get this window. Go ahead and uncheck reflectance, go to color and go to go to this little arrow right here and check layer. We'll turn the material black, go ahead and click on the layer, go to click image, go to Go ahead and select the tree, double click on the tree and go ahead and click no. From here, 
We're going to right click on this tree image here, go to copy shader, go to shader, and go to paste shader. From here, go ahead and set this to overlay and put the opacity down to like 10% to 12%. This, as you can see, just kind of makes it pop a little bit more, gives it a little bit more contrast. So from here, go ahead and click this arrow right here and click copy shader. And now this copies literally everything we just did. And now we can go ahead and go to luminance, check luminance, go to texture, this arrow again and click paste shader, which is right here. Go ahead and drag the brightness down to 0% and then you can slowly drag the mix strength down and this darkens it as you go to zero. And then as you go up to 100, it lightens it. So just Try to find a nice balance between colors or like how dark you want it. I'm gonna go with like 40, 39% for right now and cl close that window out and drag this onto the landscape. Click cubic and seamless and give this a test render by clicking this button right here. And that is looking perfect. So I really like this lighting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open this window by double clicking again to get this window. And from here, go to click bump and click this arrow and go to paste shader to paste this shader once again. And I always like dragging the bump up to 100%. This just sharpens the material up a bit. Go to displacement and check displacement and then go again and just paste the shader. Typically, all I do really is just kind of paste the shader over and over again uh, for everything, basically. But displacement, you guys can mess around a ton with the displacement there are so many cool different looks you guys can get with displacement um and go ahead and check sub polygonal displacement and turn this on to five now if you have a bad computer i would go to four if you have a really good computer you can probably go up to six but five is a sweet spot for me um and basically we're done uh for the material and you can go ahead and render this out to see how it looks and there we go, you got this really spiky, viney, mossy type of material. And this is a great material to use for landscapes. Now, for the text, we can go ahead and hide this landscape now by clicking these two dots right here. And go ahead and turn on the text, like so. And go ahead and double click on this and rename this uh, landscape material. And then we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this material. Control C, Control V, or select it, Control C, Control V. There we go. I don't know why I wasn't copying, but anyways, go ahead and open this one and type in text material. And basically all I do really is just change the height to two. And that just basically makes it less chaotic when you drag it onto the text. So as you guys can see, I drag this onto the text don't know why it's doing that. That's weird. I'm going, going to drag it onto the actual text. This is duplicate. I duplicated the text. So that's why. There we go. Now this should be working. Perfect. And click cubic and seamless. And yeah, I'm in the camera. Whoopsies. Let me fix this. All right. So I fixed the camera and I'm actually going to add a protection tag so that I don't do that again. But yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial. You guys can go ahead and render this out. And as you guys can see, you guys can get some really nice mossy materials. Uh, typically for the text, I like it lighter. So I'm going to go ahead into the text one, go to luminance and drag, drag this up a little bit, like 70 something percent. And let's render this out. And yeah, as you guys can see, that lightens it up quite a bit. And I think this is looking great. Um, you guys can also mess around with things if you guys would like. But this is typically what I do for a grungy or mossy type materials. Of course, you guys can always go to this arrow right here and add some noise to get some even more displacement, different lights, different types of displacements and mess around with this. I think electric is a pretty good one for this material as well. Drag the contrast up, something like that. It could look pretty cool. Um, put this up to 10. And then put this on to the landscape. This could probably look pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Delete that. I'm actually just going to delete the text. 
let's see. And yeah, as you guys can see, you guys can get some different types of displacements. This one's looking pretty cool as well. But yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial, guys. I think the number one thing you guys should do when making materials is just experiment because you guys can get so many different looks just by tweaking things a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it for the video, guys. This is how I make grungy or mossy slash vine materials. If you guys like this tutorial, make sure to drop a comment, like, and subscribe. Check out some of my other videos if you guys like this one because there is a good chance you like some of my other videos. With all that said, guys, it's been Instinct. Signing out for now. Peace.